In 1870, Sri Lanka was the world's largest coffee producer. That's until a fungus with the street name Coffee Rust damaged it so much to the point it made it economically unviable to keep producing it. It took the disease just 23 years to almost completely destroy the country's coffee plants. Right here in Australia, another equally nasty rust disease is threatening our native trees and shrubs, including our iconic eucalypts, tea trees and bottle brushes. It's our very own plant disease pandemic. Myrtle rust is a deadly plant disease caused by an exotic fungal pathogen called Ostropoxinia sidii. It causes deformed leaves, heavy defoliation of branches, reduced fertility, dieback, stunted growth and plant death. It was first detected in Australia in 2010 on the New South Wales Central Coast and has since spread rapidly. It spreads via bright yellow rust spores which are scattered by the wind. And it can also be carried by humans, animals, insects, or other contaminated plants. No one quite knows how myrtle rust made its way to Australia in the first place, but we presume it arrived via infected plants imported from overseas where myrtle rust is present. Unfortunately, the rampant nature of myrtle rust means it's kind of impossible to control or eradicate. To find out more about this deadly plant disease, I had a chat to Dr. Brett Summerall from the Australian Institute of Botanical Science. What are some of the ways people are trying to battle myrtle rust? The first thing to do is to try and avoid it getting into an area. So quarantine, whether it's nationally, statewide or, or in your garden yeah. is really important. In some scenarios, it's possible to use fungicides, but other than that, it's, it's really very difficult to, to do anything that's appropriate. With the fungicide then, why couldn't you use that in the bush like this? It's just the sheer scale of it. We're talking an infection zone that runs from north of Cairns across into the Northern Territory down to Victoria and Tasmania. So the sheer scale of it is, is just too big. Myrtle rust is currently threatening more than 40 species in the Myrtaceae family with extinction. Losing plant species can cause a devastating domino effect on ecosystem services that animals and humans rely on. Things like clean water, air and healthy soil. Myrtle rust is also jeopardising the growth and success of Australia's lemon myrtle industry. Yield losses of up to 70% have been reported in untreated plantations. And it's also having an impact on tea tree habitats. Melaleuca quinquinervia, also known as paperbark trees, are key to maintaining and improving water quality, as well as being important to a range of wildlife. They provide valuable nesting or roosting sites for a number of bird and bat species, and they're an important food source for migratory birds. So what's the solution? With eradication not an option, scientists at the new Australian Institute of Botanical Science are working on ways to protect these vulnerable species through seed banking. To find out more about seed banking and its role in the fight against the deadly plant disease, I spoke to Dr. Karen Somerville from the Australian Institute of Botanical Science. Karen, what is one of the best ways to preserve threatened plant species and how is it done? One of the best and most effective ways is seed banking. And it's a pretty simple process. We go out into the wild, we collect seeds from as many individuals as we can, bring them back to plant bank, dry them, package them up and put them in the freezer. The freezer at the Australian Plant Bank isn't like anything you'd have at home. Once the seeds are dried, we vacuum seal them into a little foil packet like this. And depending on how big the seeds are, we can store anything from, you know, maybe 20 to 50 seeds up to millions of seeds for, for like for orchid species. And the good thing about having those seeds in the store is that if the species disappears from the wild, we can withdraw the seeds from storage, germinate them and use those to put the plant back where it belongs. How does myrtle rust impact or hinder the seed banking efforts for these plant species that are affected by the disease? Myrtle rust is a huge problem for seed banking because it not only affects the foliage, it affects flowering and fruiting. And so the species that are badly affected just aren't producing seed in the wild anymore. If they're not producing the seed, then we can't bank it. If you can't bank the seeds of these myrtle rust affected species, then are there any other alternative options for storing them at the Australian Plant Bank? 
One of the things that we can do is to collect cuttings from as many individuals as we can, and then we'll bring those cuttings back to Plant Bank and use those to produce new plants. And once we have those new plants growing well, we can use the shoot tips from those to establish the plants in tissue culture. And that's a technique for growing plants in a sterile environment, basically in a glass jar. And they're growing on a kind of jelly that contains all the nutrients needed for plant growth. Once we get the plant established in there, what we can then do is take tiny little shoot tips from the top and preserve those using cryopreservation. And that's a technique that involves treating the shoot tips with a kind of antifreeze, so chemicals that will stop the formation of ice crystals inside the cells, so that then we can store them in liquid nitrogen at minus 196 degrees Celsius. And they're basically in a state of suspended animation and they can stay there for a really long time. So, as well as seed banking, Dr. Karen Somerville's peers are also looking at ways we can use DNA research and technology to conserve myrtle rust affected species. I spoke to Dr. Jason Bragg from the Australian Institute of Botanical Science to find out how DNA research and technology is being used by scientists in the fight against myrtle rust. So how can DNA research and technology be used to help protect plant species? Usually the way in which we do that is to, to take samples from individuals, leaves, um, study the DNA and try to figure out which individuals to take to get a collection to grow in the nursery that is genetically diverse and that is representative of the genetic variation that exists in the natural population. Why is genetic diversity important when we've got a, a collection? For an endangered species, we, we face the prospect that the individuals that we have in a collection in the nursery might be the, the last remaining representatives of that species. We want those that collection to be genetically diverse because we think that diversity is tied to the capacity of that species or that population to meet future challenges. So we think that if it's more genetically diverse, that there will be genes in there that might help it respond to a changing climate or a new pathogen that emerges, for example. How can DNA research and technology be used to help battle the Merlin rust disease? We might look for copies of genes that tend to promote resistance to myrtle rust by doing experiments to find links between different uh, copies of genes and measurements of myrtle rust resistance. And if we have that information, then we can try to build collections outside of the native range that are both genetically diverse and that are enriched for the copies of the alleles that are more myrtle rust resistant. Using that two-prong approach of preserving Australian plant species at the Australian Plant Bank and using DNA to identify and build myrtle rust resistance means scientists at the Australian Institute of Botanical Science are future-proofing how Australian native plant species from being wiped out forever. But it's not just up to scientists. You see, we've all got a role to play in helping to protect our iconic plants. So the next time you go on a bushwalk, have a think about how you can stop the spread of myrtle rust by cleaning both your clothes and your boots, both before and after. And if you'd like to do more, then you can always support the work of the Australian Institute of Botanical Science with a donation via our website. Fight for our flora and make an impact. Go to botanicgardens.org.au slash donate to help protect our plants and our future.